Hey everybody, John the Other here, obviously. And today I want to talk about everybody's favorite YouTuber, Lacey Green. Now, a lot of people think that Lacey is uh, an idiot, a moron, a cretin, a retard, brain damaged, thought inhibited. I don't think that. What she is is a liar. She's a fraud. She's a lying fraud. Lacey Green is a lying fraud. And I intend to show that in this video. Hey internet, question. Have you ever worried that someone was lying about rape? Every single time a woman comes forward about having been abused by a beloved movie star, musician, TV star, YouTubers, That star's fans immediately accuse her of lying. There are men's groups online that claim that women lie about rape 90% of the time. Now I'm going to stop here and just say, um, I find Lacey generally to be a, a very annoying, dishonest, lying, squeak toy of a human being. And so I try not to watch her videos. I watched this one because it was brought to my attention. I'm going to try not to subject you to too much of her footage, uh, but I do have to show you this part. A sheriff in Idaho very recently claimed that they don't need a better system for rape kits which collect evidence because most victims are liars. The majority of our, our rapes that are called in are actual consensual sex. Now I know I began this video making the assertion that Lacey is not a moron. I may have to back off that position a little bit. Lacey's video is making the assertion that most rape accusations are totally legitimate and that false, fraudulent, phony, spurious rape accusations made for reasons other than there was a rape um, are almost non-existent. Because most victims are liars. There's hardly any, according to Lacey. And yet, in Lacey's own video, she puts a sheriff who isn't part of a men's group. He's a sheriff whose job and whose purpose it is to maintain law and order. He is coming forward and saying most rape accusations are false. Now, just as a passing point of interest, in places as diverse as India and Israel, uh, the problem of false rape accusations is so far out of hand, is so excessive, that the governments in at least those two places are now making public, loud, and aggressive efforts to crack down on false accusations because they've spilled out of the general population and are now uh, frequently impacting people of high social or economic status, being destroyed, having their careers ruined by fraudulent rape accusations. But let's get back to addressing Lacey. Lacey, uh, you've just put in evidence, really, really substantial evidence, that the argument that you're making is a bunch of hooey, and you put that in your own video. Maybe you are stupid, in addition to being a liar. And I mean, look, couldn't you or me or anybody in the world just make up a rape for attention to get revenge out of jealousy, as Toby Turner's mom posted on Facebook? Yeah, you could totally do that. But would you do that? And now, Lacey makes an interesting point. She says that anybody could make a false accusation for any number of reasons of emotional jealousy or revenge or whatever. But she then asks, but would you do that? And that's a really interesting question. She moves quickly past, I think it's worth pausing here and examining that question. Now, if you have a moral compass uh, that's functional, that enables you to work with other human beings without harming them out of your own petty jealousies, well, then no, you couldn't do that. You wouldn't. But as we've seen in the media, case after case of fraudulent allegations, there seems to be a very large population of your friends and neighbors and co-workers who not only would do that, but are doing it with uh, growing regularity. And um, Lacey, you're in that group, as we'll see, um, because you're citing numbers from the FBI and lying about those numbers, and you're so foolish that you've actually given your sources, which we can check up and see that you're lying. How often does that actually happen? The FBI states that between 2 and 8% of rape reports are false. What Lacey just said there, 2 to 8%, is false. That is not what the FBI says. What the FBI reporting that Lacey Green referred to actually says is the following. The unfounded rate or percentage of complaints determined through investigation to be false is higher for forcible rape than for any other index crime. 8% of forcible rape complaints in 96 were unfounded while the average for all index crimes was 2%. Well, now we know where the 2 in Lacey's 2 to 8% came from. She's lying 
again, claiming that the FBI said the number of false rape allegations was 2 to 8%. That is not what they said. They said it is 8%. 2% is the rate of false allegations of all other index crimes. They happen. The FBI states that between 2 and 8% of rape reports are false, which... Now, I have to admit, I found myself a little puzzled at this part of the video because the screenshot that Lacey put on the screen shows a 2013 FBI report. Now, I originally did a search on Google to find the source of her stats, and I found 1996 numbers, and I was going to give her a little bit of uh, static, a little bit of pushback for going all the way back to 96, right? Like, why are you going to 96? Because that was the only thing I could find which had the 8% in it. It turns out the document that Lacey Green put on her screen doesn't contain any statistics at all. It's a user manual for how to interpret the stats. It doesn't actually contain any stats itself. So where does that 2-8% to 8 come from? Well, it comes apparently from a study done by a feminist. This study. Now I've put a link to this in the low bar so you can go read it yourself um, and I'll answer a couple of questions preemptively. First of all, the 2 to 8% is actually a typo in somebody repeating this stat. It's 2 to 10% in the feminist study. Now that's the range they give. The concrete number they give is 5.9%, or if you round it up, 6% false allegations. That is provably false. Not that were dropped for procedural reasons. Provably false. Okay? 6% provably false. That is still 3 times higher than the average for all other fraudulent false criminal allegations. That's not a small number, that's a huge number. Three times higher. And this is reporting by a feminist organization. There are reputable academics who report that it's 40, 60, and in some cases 90% false allegations. 90 might sound like a lot, but 6% is three times higher than the rate of false allegations for all other crimes combined. Is actually a low number in the crime world. Well, Lacey says this is a low number. It's uh, three times or maybe four times higher than the rate of false reporting for other crimes. And that's if we go from the feminist research number. If we go for a more reputable research, it's 10 to 30 times higher. Uh, what, what did I call you again, Lacey? Retarded? No, you're just a liar. Other crimes, like say theft, they hover around 10% false reports. Now, Lacey says the rate of fraudulent reporting for other types of serious crime is 10%, and she says that to throw the 2 to 8% into contrast with 10%, indicating, of course, that it's lower than the false reporting rate for other crimes. But that's false. And she doesn't give a source for her supposed 10% number, so we're just supposed to take that on faith. But the FBI reports that it's 2% false reporting for other types of crime. Not 10, 2. And the FBI says that the false reporting rate for rape is not 2 to 8%, it's 8, a solid 8. That is 4 times higher than other types of fraudulent reporting of serious crime. And it turns out, when you start digging a little deeper, that 1996 and 1997 are the last two years that the FBI gave numbers of false reporting or statistics on false reporting. They stopped producing that as a statistic after 1997. And even that 2 to 8 percent statistic is deceptive. It includes reports where someone accidentally identified the wrong person, reports that are thrown out because of inconsistent details. Lacey also says that her so-called 2 to 8 percent, which is a lie by itself, it's not 2 to 8, it's solid 8, according to the FBI, are provably false, are provably false, are unfounded. That is an accusation with no foundation in reality. She's lying even about that. She's lying about the 2 to 8, it's not 2 to 8, it's 8. And she's lying about the inclusion of other statistical facts, which would have pushed the number up to 44 to 66%. It's a solid 8, and it's provably false. Lacey is lying on almost every single point that she makes. It's, it's almost incomprehensible that any human being can actually consistently lie 
on every single thing they say. I, I wouldn't have thought that was possible. But it is a well-known fact amongst victimologists that trauma affects your memory. And that 2 to 8% includes survivors who recanted. Well, she's kind of sort of telling the truth there. It does include uh, accusers who recanted, but she reframes it as survivors who recanted, which puts, you know, like, the accusation is automatically true. They're all survivors. None of them are false accusers because if they recanted, they're still survivors of the thing that they're lying about, right? <laughs> You're just a liar. You're a false accuser. Lacey's using the term survivors. It's a very sneaky and manipulative thing. Watch out for it. Someone could take it back because they were lying, sure, but much more commonly, they take it back because they're being pressured to take it back, or because they've decided they'd rather just not deal with it. So what does this mean? It means that malicious, actually false reports and allegations are pretty rare. And pretty rare. Well, they're, according to feminist research, feminist research, which downplays this massively, um, cartoonishly almost, there's three times more false rape allegations than allegations uh, of n other major crimes. And this is such a serious problem. This is such a growing problem that both India and Israel, their governments of both of those countries, are now um, publicly cracking down and publicly excoriating and condemning false accusers because it spilled out of the general population into members of government, members of high profile, high finance, you know, high status individuals are being torn down by uh, this growing and out of control culture of false allegations. Oh, it's very rare, Lacey. Oh, you pathetic, pathetic, pathetic liar. Yet, doubting someone, calling them a liar when they come forward is extremely common. Many of the reasons why we're inclined to doubt someone revolve around rape myths, myths about victims, and myths about gender. For Lacey is saying that the reason we doubt these um, accusers is because of rape myths. No, that's not it. It's because in the media, in the mainstream reporting, we're seeing a growing, continuously escalating number of very blatantly fraudulent accusations. We have the Gian Gameshi fraudulent accusations, his collaborating accusers uh, proven to be false by uh, the excellent work of um, Marie Hennen. We have uh, Jackie, Mattress Girl, false accuser. We have uh, the false accusations against football player Brian Banks. We have uh, false accusations uh, by Keisha against her producer to escape a recording contract with Sony Music. We have a kid in the UK, Jay Cheshire, who was falsely accused by another student and she recanted saying it was all baloney and then uh, the devastation of his life was so much that he killed himself. We have a, a, a wandering pedestrian on a UK tube platform accused of sexual assault by one of the Game of Thrones actresses with CCTV camera footage showing that they didn't even have physical contact with one another. This is not rape myths. This is the media showing us a growing, escalating phenomenon, a, a, a runaway trend of false accusations and no significant consequences to the accusers. This is not rape myths. The only myth is that this isn't happening, but we can all see that it is. And absolute despicable shame on Lacey Green justifying and validating this continued trend. People are dying because of this. People are going to jail. Their lives, their careers, their families are being destroyed over frivolous, idiotic, puerile, easily refutable false allegations, and Lacey is justifying it and saying it's all okay, and that our perception that this is happening is just a rape myth. Shame on you, Lacey, you despicable human being. And I don't say that often. One, most perpetrators aren't greasy, creepy guys who hang out in the shadows. They're just regular people in our lives. When fans, friends, family, coworkers find out that someone that they know and love did something terrible. Now the idea that Lacey is selling here is the feminist rhetoric, the feminist mythology or dogma, whatever you want to call it, that every man is a rapist, that all men are rapists. Because we think of rape as a violent crime, a, a crime of predation or something that a sociopath or a, a, you know, a predator would commit. But she's blurring the two together. She's saying that rapists are the nice guys, the average guys, the nice guys are the guy working next to you, the guy at the next desk, the taxi driver, the Uber driver, um, your brother or your brother's friend. She's selling you this terror, this fear and loathing and hatred 
And uh, I think that's what a despicable, horrendous, uh, horrible human being does. You, Lacey, you're not trying to build bridges or solve problems. You're trying to cultivate fear and hatred. Um, shame on you, you despicable, uh, lying scumbag. There's no way to get around this. You know, I don't usually go after the person. I try to always focus on the argument. But Lacey, there's no excusing this. There is no excusing you. It can be really hard to grapple with and accept, and instead, they choose to deny it. That halo effect around a perpetrator can be so strong that you can have cases like Cosby's where nearly 60 women come forward and report, and people still don't believe that anything happened. Now, uh, speaking of rape myths, let's address two rape myths that Lacey is perpetrating right now. First of all, she's using the word perpetrator instead of the word accused. She's skipping over the concept that somebody accused has the possibility of being innocent. That there's any reason to accuse a person, vengeance, hurt feelings, maliciousness, uh, blackmail, the personal elevation of the accuser being elevated by becoming a rape victim in media. Just skip over all that and just assume accusation proves guilt, right? If you're accused, you're therefore guilty. Words, some words uttered by an irresponsible socialite or a, a frivolous child woman destroys a life. Forget about all that. That's one rape myth. The other one is, well, she says 60 accusers against Cosby. Well, I don't really care about Cosby. I think Cosby did some bad stuff. But the point is that 60 accusers. Well, every time there is a story of ac accusation of sexual misconduct in the media, and it's against some high-profile person, a celebrity, a politician, the chairman of the IMF, or whatever, you always get lots and lots of Me Too's. You get lots and lots of people saying, reading the story, seeing the nature of the accusations, going, that happened to Me Too, and they slightly change the story, and they go, Me Too. Because being victims, they become elevated. They become minor celebrities. They become morally superior because they're victims. Lacey is ignoring that, pretending that, well, you couldn't possibly have 60 because they couldn't all be lying. No, most of them are lying. Lacey, everybody else watching. Most of them are lying because there's a benefit to lying for them. Elevation of their personal status and there's no significant consequence when they get caught. When it's shown that it's baloney. Even when it is shown definitively to be baloney, you still have this massive section of the population going, I believe victims in spite of all evidence. Just because these ones were lying doesn't mean it didn't happen. And Lacey is ignoring the human damage that it does, not just to the people accused who are innocent, those who are accused who are innocent. I'm not going to pretend that anybody cares about, you know, men accused. Men don't matter. They're disposable, disposable human beings, stepping stones for other people's ambitions. That's all they are. The children who rely on fathers to pay their mothers so that they can go to school and have a nice place to live and so on, fuck them. Fuck them in this world. Right? Women supported by these men. Fuck them. Fuck them in this world. Because the only people who matter in this narrative are accusers. I'm not going to say victims. Accusers. And those accused, automatically guilty. Lacey, what a scum bag you are. What a horrendous, despicable human being you are. You cannot possibly see these as human beings, otherwise you wouldn't be able to live with yourself. They're just tools and stepping stones. Sometimes the perpetrator even goes so far as to say, I didn't do it. Sometimes the perpetrator says, I didn't do it. The perpetrator. The perpetrator. <laughs> okay. We've already been over this, but I'm going to go over it again, because Creature here is um, repeating the same rhetoric. The perpetrator. The accused, not the perpetrator, the accused, the person being accused. Now, we know that in other areas of criminal behavior, there are false accusations. It's typically 2% of accusations are false. But remember, that's not like there's 100 accusations across the country and only two of them are false. That's 2% across the country. That's thousands and thousands and thousands. This is a high rate of human carnage based on false accusations, just of non-rape things. We know from the FBI that the number is three to four times 
higher. Not three to four percent, three to four times higher for rape than other areas of major crime. It's eight percent. At least it was in 1996, and since they stopped reporting, it's really hard to know, but it's pretty clear based on media that it's increasing. It's going up, not down. Going up, 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 up. Because it's easier and easier to accuse, especially through media, where you don't have to have your challenge tested. You don't have to have your accusation met with, you know, an inquiry into evidence. So Lacey, gleeful, little blonde, cute Lacey with a little problem glasses, is saying, the perpetrator might say they didn't do it. No, 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 the accused. And we know that that number is at least three to four times higher than the rate of false accusation of other crimes. Women are not a special type of human being. They're just the same people with the same human urges, the same greed, the same personality failings, the same moral failings as everybody else. Which means that if you remove the consequences for bad behavior, you get more bad behavior. And there's very little consequence for false allegations for women. So, of course, you have more of it. It's not that women are particularly more evil than everybody else, it's that they enjoy more privilege than everybody else. They enjoy more exemption from accountability than everybody else. So, of course, there's more f false accusations. And Lacey here, public educator or whatever the hell she calls herself, is perpetuating and enabling the destruction of private citizens, the destruction of families, the termination of careers, the removal of fathers from children who need fathers. Lacey is doing this in service of her little religious cult of feminism. Because she doesn't actually care about anything but her own aggrandizement. It's truly despicable. Promotion and enablement of human carnage for, you know, transitory personal fame. It's, it's beyond despicable. <laughs> it's beyond contemptible. And we're not going to watch all of the rest of Lacey's video. We're going to skip forward quite a bit towards the end. Because there's some real gems down there. On reality, about 68% of victims of sexual crimes don't report. 68% of the victims of sexual crimes don't report. Okay, that's a pretty low rate of reporting. And that would be really bad if, like, 100% of the victims of other types of crime did report. That would, like, be an anomaly. It was like, why aren't they reporting? But we have to have context. So, to supply a little context, I'm going to go to a panel discussion that was held by the Canadian Association for Equality in Toronto uh, about a week and a half ago. And I'm going to go to Richard Litowski, who is a lawyer in Canada, who answers that very same exact question. Yes, uh, reported uh, sexual assault allegations are at the very low end of the spectrum. But according to the same, I think, statistics that David is relying on, across the board, less than a third of all criminal acts are ever reported to the police. Less than a third. Across the board, we're talking about assaults, simple assaults, robberies, mischiefs to property, all crimes. So the reporting rate has to be put into context. And only 2% of rapists ever see a day in jail. The second point with respect to the uh, rates of conviction, Christie's absolutely right. I have the statistics in front of me. The homicide rate of uh, the, the, the homicide uh, percentage of guilty findings is 53%. Sexual assaults are 45%. The acquittal rates uh, for homicides are, uh, if I'm reading this correctly, 8%. Sexual assaults, 9%. Okay, so I don't think I'm a, a better presenter, but I'm just going to reiterate those numbers. The conviction rate for uh, murder charges is 53%. That's guilty. Murder, charged with murder, the conviction rate is 53%. For rape in Canada, under the current Canadian Criminal Code, it's called sexual assault. It's rape. The conviction rate is 45%. They're very close to each other. The acquittal rate, the not guilty findings, for murder is 8%. That is the number of people found 
uh, not guilty of murder charges is 8%, and the number of people found not guilty of rape charges in, in Canada under the Canadian Criminal Code, that's called sexual assault, 9%, within 1% of each other. Those two rates, the conviction rate and the acquittal rate, are statistically equivalent to each other. And if you as a feminist, or you, Lacey, claim that there is some great anomaly, there's too many acquittals in rape, there's it's like out of, out of the box, out of the boundary, it's a big, huge spike in the graph or something like that, or that there's an insufficient number of convictions, I'm going to just point you back to these statistics and say, no, you are completely full of crap. So, like every other point you've made in your video, once more, <laughs> you're lying. You're just uh, a lying liar, a proselytizer of falsehoods, a liar. I'm sorry. It's a nasty thing to say, but that's what you are, a liar. Does that mean that 98% of people are just lying? So I'm skipping over a little less than a minute of Lacey's video here because it's a bunch of shit that I don't even care to address. It's a bunch of bullcrap. Let's move forward. Now, the next thing that Lacey says in this video is the most egregiously false, the most outrageously ridiculous demonstrably false lie. I mean, it's it's like she's just switched sides and taken my side of the argument, except that she's lying. She says that false accusations, when they're discovered, are treated very seriously. No, they're not. No, they're not. Which is why we have a growth industry in false accusations. I'll just play Lacey's video and you can see for yourself what kind of horseshit she's talking Actually, truly, really, truly false. False reports are illegal, and they're typically taken pretty seriously when they surface. It's really, really important to talk about them because ultimately, in this fight, we're fighting for justice for everyone. So we need to pay attention in the rare moments that this happens to address them, to better understand them. And we do a whole lot of talking about false reports, which is why we also need to talk about the reality that sexual assault accounts are nearly always true. How we more readily believe someone who says they've been robbed than they've been raped. How men are far more likely to be sexually assaulted than to be falsely accused. How it's far more common that a survivor is convinced to back down by the public, friends, family, even the police when something horrible did happen. We need to talk about how widespread myths and disbelief protect abusers and allow them to keep on abusing others. If false reports are something that worries you, know that statistically you're on the side of reason and justice and truth to believe someone who comes forward. We need to be willing to face the truth, to approach justice honestly, even when the perpetrator is someone that we know and love. So to April Fletcher and any survivor who finds the strength to come forward on YouTube or beyond, I believe you. And one day I hope that the world does too. <laughs> so what the hell was that? I mean, I don't know if you've watched Lacey's video separate from my commentary on it. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because I keep butting in and yapping and giving my opinion. But if you watch Lacey's video by itself, you'll notice that the last minute, the part I just played, is a little bit sped up. It's a whole bunch of talking points ram-jammed together and uh, they're mostly in contradiction to everything that she said in the rest of the video. So what on earth was that? Well, that was a little bit of covering maneuver to keep people like me off her back. Uh, well, look, I'm on your side. We're for justice. We're working together. No, 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 no. Lacey, that was covering. That was bullcrap. And anybody watching this should be aware that you are being lied to. And that one last minute where the pacing changes and suddenly you have this whole pile of talking points on top of one another, that's a signal to you that you're being hustled because it refutes everything else in the video. Lacey is a liar um, and she's in service of a religious ideology called feminism and her own self-aggrandizement and the carnage that she promotes in other people's lives matters not one wit to her. But thanks very much, everybody, for watching, and as always, have a lovely, lovely day.